Hey everyone, we're going on a bit of a headphone store safari today and our first stop is right in the heart of Mong Kok uh, on Shantung Street. Uh, it's a store called Mingo and like all of uh, Hong Kong's kind of specialty headphone stores, it's hidden inside this commercial building right here behind me. So continuing on the theme of density, you can see just how many stores have set up shop in this one single building. And while I would love to check out the store named Selfie, today we're going to be going to Mingo. So I'm just outside the store now, and in case you're wondering uh, where the money is coming from to fund any potential shopping spree I do inside that store, uh, in 2011 Hong Kong actually gave every adult Hong Kong citizen a $6,000 tax rebate. And I haven't actually spent that money, or I haven't had the chance to spend that money until now, so uh, on this trip I'm going to be doing my best to stimulate the local economy. So here we are inside the store, and I'm just going to give you a slow pan so you can get an idea of actually what is available in Hong Kong as far as headphone stores. Okay, so I'm just going to give you a slow pan around the store and you can get an idea of just what is uh, <coughs> kind of available in Hong Kong. And as you can see, there is nothing like this in Australia. It's pretty amazing stuff. So what we have here is basically full ranges from particular companies with demo models for you to try uh, from companies like Westone, the full range of new Sony products, Shaw, Sennheiser, etc, etc, etc. I could spend an entire afternoon in this store and still not get through even a third of all the demos. And if you're worried about swapping earwax, these kinds of stores do provide sanitary wipes. On this trip, I really wanted to demo Sony's new lineup of XBA hybrid earphones. The former flagship XBA H3 is one of my favourites, and these earphones never made it to Australia. The plastic shelled XBA A3 appears to be the direct successor to the XBA H3. Sony apparently removed the vents on the earpieces, which seems to have improved noise isolation, which was one of my main complaints with the H3. On first impressions, the XBA A3 reminded me very much of the XBA Z7. Uh, it has big bass, a creamy mid-range, and a somewhat laid-back sound. Of course, I had to try the XBA A3's bigger brother, the XBA Z5, which is the new flagship in the lineup, with beautiful magnesium earpieces and a different balanced armature tweeter. Surprisingly, I found the Z5 too overwhelming on first listen, with a seemingly bloated bass section on Daft Punk's Lose Yourself to Dance, and vocals that were more diffuse and distant than they were on the A3. I think, to be 100% uh, honest, I like the A3 more. Mingo also offers an extensive range of custom demos, but I think I'm too afraid of commitment to go down that path. There was a stand with demos of Westone's new multi-balanced armature in-ear monitors, including the 6-driver W60. I only listened briefly, but I really didn't like the sound of the W60. Uh, it's very thick, and I made a note that it sounded like listening to things through a sock. Two other earphones that I tried were the new Logitech UE900S and the Audio-Technica IM04. The IM04 has rather enchanting plastic shells, and the sound is equally enchanting with beautiful, rich forward vocals. Unusually for an Audio-Technica, it seemed to focus more on lower mids rather than upper mids, and the bass, while punchy, had that typical balanced armature lack of reverb. I thought it sounded really great, but perhaps not the best all-rounder. The UE900S that I tried had the new plastic unibody shells. I thought it had a nice, solid, tight bass response, but the mids and the vocals sounded somewhat blunted and recessed. On first listen, I didn't love it. Of course, while I had the chance, I had to try the much vaunted 1000 US dollar Shure SE846. As soon as I listened, I could see why people compare it to the new Force Primo 8, which means that with the balanced blue filter, it sounds super, super mid-focused. Maybe I was getting tired or confused by this point, but like with the Primo 8, I didn't really see what all the fuss was about. It's probably just not my kind of signature. 
overall, with their extensive range of demos, the flagship Mingo store in Hong Kong is a great place to go if you're looking for a pair of earphones. As with every audio store in Hong Kong, be prepared to negotiate if you want a discount on the list price. The next stop on our store safari is just across the road, Jabin, Hong Kong. Jabin is a network of audio stores with locations all around the Asia Pacific region, including Malaysia, Singapore, and even Melbourne. You'll find Jabin, Hong Kong, in the festive and not at all creepy Wing Wah building. Jabin is on the second floor. To get up there, you can take the elevator or the stairs. The elevator or the stairs. Let's take the stairs. you're probably better off taking the elevator. Though really, it's only a little less creepy. <laughs> Thankfully, once you're up there, Jabin really is a nice little store. It's quieter than Mingo, and it makes for a good retreat from the crowds of Mongkok. Plus, it has this cute poster. Jabin seems to specialize in full-sized headphones and has an extensive range of demo units available. Oddly enough, I noticed that full-sized portable headphones don't seem that popular in Hong Kong. If you have some idea of why that is, leave a comment because I'm kind of curious. The folks at Jabin got my iPhone hooked up to the Sony UDA-1 DAC slash amp, and I had to listen to a few headphones in quick succession. The Oppo PM1 is a pleasant sounding planar, but nothing really jumped out at me on first listen. The AKG K812 is a beautifully crafted headphone, and the leaner, upper mid-focused sound reminded me very much of the AKG K712 that I have back at home. The standout headphone for me was the new Planar Magnetic Fostex TH500RP, which I found to be a smooth, gorgeous sounding headphone with plenty of impact and a nice, easygoing tuning. And it was also quite a comfortable headphone, which is always a plus in my book. The TH500RP has a bit of a cupped hands effect to the sound though, which made vocals sound a bit unnatural to me. Lastly, I had another encounter with the Fostex TH600, which Jabin was doing a special price on. Just like on the first listen, I found the TH600 to be a rather breathtaking listen, with hyper-extended and forward treble combined with just crazy levels of sub-bass impact. It's a dramatic sounding headphone, and honestly, it's enough to give me a slight headache if I accidentally listen at the wrong volume. This second time around with the TH600, I was really tempted to buy it, both because of the unique sound and the good price. Okay, so the final offer on the TH600 that Jabin made me was 3,500 Hong Kong dollars in cash. Uh, and that is a really good price and I am very, very tempted that's cheaper than I could get it from, you know, imported. Uh, but I'm gonna sleep on it because my 6,000 Hong Kong dollars is very, very precious to me. And there's also a bunch of other headphone stores that I still have yet to check out in Wan Chai. And I'll show you around those as well. So this might be a bit of a two-part series. Anyway, I hope this gives you some idea of just how awesome uh, headphone stores are in Hong Kong. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. Happy listening.